What's up guys, welcome back to another SP Vids video. In this one, I'm gonna be talking all about micro chopping. For this particular video, just for the sake of ease, again, I'm gonna be using my SP404SX, but this will apply to any sampler that you own. So this isn't a specific SP404SX video. This is purely for beat makers that like to sample. And these tips should be applicable to any kind of sampler or digital workstation that you're using. Just quickly as well, before I start, don't forget to check out SP vids for custom dials. There's a limited amount on there at the moment, three different colors. Go grab them while they're still available and then there will be more dropping once those are sold out. So if you're interested in these, go over to spvids.com and check those out. You can also find lo-fi drum packs there as well. And another quick update is that lo-fi drums volume three is very close to completion now. So I was working on that pack this weekend and I'm hoping to have that live very, very soon. So stay tuned for that one. If you want to keep informed on my updates, check me out on Instagram at spvids underscore or I'm on Twitter spvids as well. So yeah, go follow me on those as well. So yeah, let's get into this one micro chopping on the sp404sx and like i say this can apply to any sampler okay so here we are at the sp404sx and what i've actually done is just got some chops in here micro sampled them from various records and i think this is the best way to show you guys exactly what the concept is etc etc so where does micro sampling come from well i think basically in the early days samplers had a very very little sample time on them if you look at the sp1200 for example or even the sp202 as well which is a 90s kind of sampler very very limited memory space on them so you would have to chop tiny little bits of, of record and I think some of it as well may also come from the fact that there was a certain threshold. If you went over that threshold in a record, if you were sampling it, then you would be breaking copyright. So I think it was something like under three seconds or something really, really small. You could take tiny little bits and create beats out of them. So that might be another origin of where micro sampling kind of came from. But I think it's quite interesting to try it on equipment, even if it can do more than that just because it changes up your workflow a little bit and makes you a little bit more creative. One of the great things about micro sampling as well is that you can take tiny little segments from records that might not be samplable. So for example, if a record's very drum heavy, you might be able to chop out the tiny little bits in between the drum hits. So you've got more room to make beats even if the records don't necessarily work for sampling that well. Okay, so I'm in bank B here on my SP and I'm gonna be showing you the chops that I've got from these records. So the first one here, very very short chop less than a second probably and it's just kind of like a synthy note it's a tiny little bit of guitar underneath it as well and number two i think this is a guitar with a kind of synth underneath that as well synth with a few cymbals underneath I think kind of a piano-y kind of synthy sound. So and a little bit of vocal on the end, which I could chop off if I wanted to. Okay, that one's slightly longer, but it was a sustained amount of time with no percussion, just a few little hits on the cymbals again, so I was able to use that one. So for this style of sampling, pattern sequencer is probably going to be your best bet for laying down the sequences and experimenting with them. But for this example, I'm just going to be doing it by hand. I don't want to get into the whole pattern sequencing, making beats with pattern sequencer in this particular video. I've touched on it before and I will go back to it at some point and have another go because it didn't go too well. <laughs> but for this one, I'm just going to stick to these. So I've got these chops and on their own... They don't sound like much, but once we start thinking about those in the context of a beat, we can start making a pattern and seeing what we can come up with. So let's have a little play around, maybe tap the hi-hat for a little bit to, to try and get a tempo in our head. So something like that would be the right kind of tempo. So So as you can see, that one's too short. So we have to be bringing in another chop before that one's finished, so. Thank you. 
So quite like that pattern I've just come up with there. So it's two, two, one, five, and I think it's six, three. So. So what that micro chopping has actually done is really changed the way that I'm using samples. I would usually always cut on the note and just play the note every sort of four beats. But that's what the great thing about micro chopping is it kind of pushes your creativity because you've got to fill those gaps that the sample can't fill for you. So let's just try and do some loose drumming underneath that to see if I can do the pattern and the drums at the same time. Okay, so we've got quite an interesting beat there. The levels aren't necessarily right at the moment, but I just wanted to put that to a kind of hip hop style tempo for you guys to see how those chops would end up potentially being a beat. So I'll go through another example. I think I've got some more here. So yeah, I have been really enjoying this process actually. I think it's, it's so cool trying to chop out just like nice little sounds that you hear in records. So let's have a listen to these little chops again. So more synth. That's a very nice one. Some vocals layered with some synth. And the same again for six. So they are working very, very well, those chops. I really like the sound of those. And as long as I was sticking to five and six as kind of the theme of the song, so. I was literally just jamming the other pads there. So I was just making it up as I was going along. And as you could tell, most of them were working. So that is, down to sample selection a little bit, but I've just got lucky with those ones. Micro chopped up all the little parts out of that sample that I liked and put them onto the pads and yeah, rearranged them and getting some really, really nice vibes out of that one. So there was another quick example, a few little chops that I cut up. Apologies if the sound's a bit ropey, I'm using a cable which doesn't seem like it's very good quality wise, but hopefully that gives you an idea. So there's three examples there where I've taken tiny little bits of each song, each sample, and yeah, just started playing around with them. 
and filling in those gaps, making sure there's no gaps between the samples and it ends up just being a really, really interesting effect. And what is more as well as I was mentioning earlier is this is a kind of change in my workflow completely. I wouldn't usually chop this heavily, this intensely, but this kind of forces you to do it. So definitely something worth trying if you're struggling for a little bit of creativity or you're looking to expand the way that you make beats. And as I said, this will apply to any sampler as well. So go and try it on your sampler, especially useful for ones that don't have much memory like the SP202 in the SP range, the SP1200 if you're lucky, if you're lucky enough to own one of those uh, bad boys. <laughs> definitely out of my budget for now. Technology is pushing things where you don't need to be using this technique. You can have samples that are so long, but but yeah, give this a try, guys, and just see what sound you can get out of it. I think it's a really cool technique, and I've had a lot of fun chopping these up. I'm definitely going to be doing more. Okay, that's it for this one, guys. I hope those tips were useful for you. Give it a go, micro chopping. Super, super fun, and it doesn't matter what sampler you've got, you can apply that to any sampler. So I was using the SP, but it can apply to any. And it's actually really handy for those that don't have much memory space. So yeah, give it a go. I think there's some really nice sounding beats in there, which I've started creating. And they're definitely beats that I wouldn't usually make, especially with the SP. So I think there's definitely a lot of merit in exploring different types of sampling and different ways of sampling. So yeah, give it a go and see what results you can get. As I mentioned earlier, don't forget to head to spvids.com, custom dials for the SP404SX. And I've got some lo-fi drum packs as well, which are really good for padding out your collection. So go check those out if you could and help support the channel. But apart from that, keep making beats, try some micro sampling, and I'll be back with more content very soon. Peace!